Welcome to Solve It. My name is Kanan Arinda and I'm going to be your host for today. Now the thing about working solutions is that they are much like high school crushes in that they are never constant and are always evolving. So what we do here at Solutions Africa is to document these working solutions from the problems that they are solving to the impact they are having in the community. And here's an example of some of the stories we've done so far. So our first story looks at how Ugandans managed to beat their phobia for medical syringes. With COVID-19 vaccinations rising from 2.5 million all the way to 12 million. So the question is, what worked? We're going to look at a Ugandan that's turning stigma into pride as a way of promoting tolerance and prevention of HIV and AIDS in the country. And next, we're looking at a group of young Ugandans that are working tirelessly to increase the commercial value of our staple food here in Uganda, matoke. A Ugandan Ministry of Health vehicle passes all the way by a big hospital and goes to a bar to actually conduct a vaccination campaign. Kind of ironic, isn't it? But this is actually a true story, and it's testament of how Uganda was carrying out its vaccination campaign. Because they came up with an idea to actually move vaccination centers to very unconventional spaces. Dana Yebari tells a story. Uganda has rolled out over 15 million COVID-19 vaccine doses since March 2021. Those are quite impressive figures, but that's just part of the story. By November, Uganda had rolled out less than 3 million doses. Four months later, we are talking 15 million doses. How did Ugandans beat this phobia for syringes? Did medics resort to administering by mouth? Certainly no. Different corporate companies and institutions partnered with the country's Minister of Health to move the vaccines from hospitals to more accessible spaces. The government picked it on to organize mass vaccination drives, significantly growing the numbers. True to his word, in January, President Yoweri Museveni fully opened the economy and thanks to the mass vaccination rollout. As they love to say nowadays, Ugandans are outside. With reports of over 10 million doses lying idle, the country needs more of these partnerships to organize vaccination drives to better the current uptake. Now, sadly, in the past four decades, HIV has killed up to 15 million Africans. And the World Health Organization says that the reason it's been able to thrive in this part of the world is mostly because of fear, ignorance, and stigma. They've actually come out to say that one of the ways we should adapt in a way to prevent the spread of HIV is by adapting new methods. And one person that is doing exactly that is a one Isaac Lekdian. Our reporter has more of this. Today on Solutions Now Africa, we meet a young Ugandan turning around stigma into pride to promote acceptability of HIV AIDS among young people. I'm Roneta Atwine, a reporter and a journalist in Kampala. Close to four decades, human immunodeficiency virus has killed over 15 million people in Africa. The Uganda AIDS Commission says about 1.5 million people are living with the virus in this country. HIV prevalence is high among young people and so is the stigma. The World Health Organization has called for new strategies to ensure that stigma reduction is part of HIV treatment and prevention program. Since 2014, Isaac Lekdiang and his Uganda network of young people living with HIV AIDS 
have been organizing Mr. and Miss Y Plus Beauty Pageant as a stigma fighting model. The Y Plus Beauty Pageant began in 2014 as one of our flagship projects to combat stigma and discrimination against young people living with HIV. We sought to give a human face to, a human and young face, let me be clear about that, to HIV. He has crowned hundreds of young women and men living with the virus in two ambassadors of hope. Beyond the winners, other participants are mentored into agents of social change. So I think that is for me is the biggest achievement we can say, even beyond focusing on who has won this year or who has not won. Just being able to be among the 24 every year is a big deal. <laughs> Now, serious question here. What else can you do with a banana besides eating it? Not what you think. I'm talking strictly farming here. Now, as a farmer, and yes, this embodiment of a typical spoiled brat from Kampala is actually a farmer. I am a farmer. Now, as a farmer, if you asked me what parts of a banana plant are important, I'd probably point at this part. And maybe this part? Because, I mean, what else can we do with that? But one Helen actually believes there is a solution to this. She says there is a startup that can help increase the commercial value of another part of the banana plant and make amazing products from it. So I'm gonna let you see that. This is Uganda, the largest producer of bananas in Sub-Saharan Africa. Known as the Banana Republic, this country produces 9 million tons of bananas in over 95 varieties, which generate about 3 million tons of waste every year. My name is Helen Kawahukia, a reporter with Solutions Now Africa, and today we see how banana waste recycling is set to break barriers in the fashion industry while reducing waste levels in the country. We all know what is fast fashion is doing in our, in our ecosystem, in our environment, in our world. So I started studying the material. How can I blend uh, banana fiber with organic, my, organic cotton? I had many failures. Until recently, I had the, my first breakthrough of having a fine material where it is washable, can clean it, and yeah, it can develop a out of it. After every harvest, farmers discard the stock, leaving it to rot away or burn. Sadly, burning emits carbon dioxide and the rot releases methane, a potent greenhouse gas. With the burning desire to make a name, a brand identity, Maweja Muhammad Dima, a chef, got into an incubation program that made him fall in love with the banana fiber. He saw this as a new raw material to create sustainable fashion and artistic products. I had passion for art when I was studying my high school. And then from there, I used that particular passion to, to go into an incubation program. But then I was expo exposed to this particular material, like the material which comes out of the stem of the, fiber, of the banana tree, which has elevated me to create a, a brand. Out to Chitegomba in Kasangati, 13 kilometers northeast of Kampala, to meet the rest of the team. In a small shack, Dima set up his Maweje creations where nature meets art, a banana fiber center that empowers the banana farmer and supports the youth in the community to revolutionize the art and fashion industry by making fiber products. We make various products in banana fiber, that is, um, we make clocks earrings like the ones I'm wearing. Uh, we also make wall hangings, a table mat, uh, wallets, and a bag. And then um, other products, we also have pen holders. We also make them in uh, banana fiber. The process is manual, and the labor is intensive, with the team having to use knives and pins to create the fiber material. So these are the dry banana fibers. We, of course, look out for the good ones, because there are the good ones and the bad ones. So when you're making our products, uh, they, for example, the clock, the outer shell of the clock, 
we usually use this fiber and then we design the inside of the cloak with this. These are the extracted banana fibers. So we get out, we get them out of the banana stems. So what we do with these ones, we, we weave them with a cotton so that we can get out a fabric that is later used to make bags. Uh, we've done so far wallets and a backpack. As an African child in Uganda, I grew up playing with fibers. I made dolls out of them while watching my brothers make balls out of fibers. Today, Kato Ashraf teaches me how to smoothen out a banana fiber to revolutionize the fashion industry. Though exhausting, Dima is hopeful for the future as people begin to embrace banana fiber as a new raw material to replace environmentally degrading materials in the fashion industry. Training over 200 youths, he sells to both local and international markets. Indeed, for Maweja Creations, the future is bright. Well, that's all we had for you this month. But I can promise you that more amazing content is coming. So you might want to subscribe, turn that notification bell on and leave a like. You can also leave a comment and tell us what other amazing stories you might want to hear about. Also follow us on all our social media platforms at Solutions Now Africa. Till next time, miss me.